All right. Good morning. Y'all doing good? Nine more minutes of morning. Are y'all awake? Glad you're in church. Wives, look at your husband and say, you, you needed to be here today. Kind of sarcastically like that, I'd like you to just do that for me. No, for real, go right now and just say it right now. Like you, you, you need some Jesus. You've been, acting, you've been acting the way you've been acting this week and you need some Jesus. <clears throat> now husbands, don't say it, but think it. You, <laughs> you need some Jesus, girl. Come on, somebody. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name's Keith. I am the campus pastor in, at our Lubbock campus. And uh, we, me and Natalie miss you guys dearly. Uh, we, we think about you often. She sends her love. Uh, I'm just super glad and, uh, and happy to be here with you today. And, uh, you know, Midland always holds a special place in our heart. And so uh, it's just a privilege and an honor to, to, be, to be able to bring the message and, and just hang out with you for a few moments. Uh, just so you know, your pastor, Cody Sykes, is in Lubbock, uh, probably just uh, bringing the house down up there and preaching up at our campus. So we kind of switched roles today, but um, really, really excited, excited to be here. Uh, let's just jump right in, can we? Uh, I, I wanted to share a message with you that has kind of been stirring in my heart for some time and been preaching on it over the last two months at our Lubbock campus and kind of going to do my best today to combine all of the messages and, and bring it into, into one for you today. But I, I had a vision not too long ago as I was preparing on, on these two topics, performance and identity. Today, that's what actually, actually what I wanna to talk to you about is I wanna to talk to you about performance and identity. You know the two go hand in hand, right? Anything that we don't, any, any area we have our identity in anything other than Jesus is an area we're performing. You see, when we put our identity 100% completely in Jesus, performance falls off of our life. There's no need to perform when you realize you're a son. There's no need to perform when you realize you're a daughter of the Most High God. There's actually nothing to perform for because there was one performance on the cross and it was when Jesus gave his life up for you and me. And by the blood of Jesus, you've been called an heir. You've been called a son. You've been called a daughter. You're the child of the Most High God. Not because of what you did, but because of everything that he did. That is, that is who we, that is, that is where you sit today. That is where you stand today. You stand in sonship. You stand in daughterhood. But let's all just be super honest. I'm gonna get to my vision here in just a moment, but let's all be super honest. Performance is something that we all deal with, isn't it? It seems to be one of those things that hangs on, that grabs on, that, 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 that is a leech on our life. I got really, really good news for you today. You don't have to perform anymore. Some of you need to hear that word. You actually don't have to perform. You don't have to perform for God. Everyone in church kind of says amen to that one because they know that one, even though we still do it. But you don't have to perform for God. You don't have to perform for people. But here's the kicker. Here was the kicker for me. You know who else you don't have to perform for? Yourself. When you lay your head on that pillow at night, you can rest assured you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. You don't have to do anything to make yourself feel good. That should make you feel good enough. Amen. So I had, as I was diving into just this idea of performance and our identity, uh, the Lord kind of gave me a picture. When I say vision, I don't want it to sound super spiritual. Uh, it, it was more like I pictured this in my head and I felt like it was uh, led by the Lord. He led my imagination. <clears throat> um, it is a little bit weird, so hang with me for a moment. Um, I, I, I pictured us, I, I saw myself, and I think that it, was, it represented uh, the church as well. You seeing yourself. And I was represented in these different, what I would call realms or worlds or clouds uh, up above me like this. And the, I, I saw different realms and I was walking around in each of the realms. Is this making sense? I was walking around in each of these bubbles and in these worlds. And the Lord began to speak to me and he said, each of those realms represents an area of your life that you've put your identity in something other than Jesus. And guess what I was doing in those realms? Guess what we were doing? 
where we're performing. We're walking around in this world performing. Let me kind of make more sense of it. I'd put, we, we put our identity in, in our job, what kind of job we have, what position we have in that job. We put our identity in the successes and the accolades that we have in our life. We put our identity in our good looks or lack thereof. We put our identity, that, that wasn't very funny to y'all. So, okay, moving on. Uh, I got a lot of jokes today, so I'll just let that one go. We put our identity in our mistakes, our past, the truck we drive, how much we can bench press. No one really cares how much you can squat. So how much we bench press? <laughs> no one's looking at your legs. Come on, man. All right. <clears throat> We put our identity in all these, these things and, and here we were. I, I don't know if you've discovered this in your relationship with God, but when we start to, when we start to talk around identity, none of us are putting 100% of our identity in something other than God. It's not that all of our identity is in our job and none of it's in Christ. What I find to be more accurate is that we, we put little tidbits of our identity in certain things. It's in the people we hang out with. It's how much money we make. It's in the job that we have. It's in our... And, we, and just like we put it in our, our failures, we put it in our successes. And there's a little bitty percentages of our identity that are tied up somewhere. And here's what I saw in the vision. I saw, if you, would, if you would allow God to do this, I saw him reaching up and pulling you out of that realm and holding you in his hand. Actually, what I saw, it was like we were like a Barbie doll. It was, it was when, when, we, when he held us in our hand, we were, we were naked. And I know y'all understand when I say naked because it's, you don't pronounce it naked. It's, we're in Texas, it's naked. And if you felt awkward that I said naked, I'm just gonna keep saying it until you get unawkward about the fact that I say naked, 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 naked. <laughs> Quick story that has nothing to do with my message, but I feel like I gotta share it again. Is that all right? So in, in um, you know, I have my quarterback days and when I was playing for the Rams, I, uh, naked is a football play. So it was like, I can't remember, I've had too many concussions, but it was something like strong right, it was like strong right, fake 67, naked right. And so you fake, you fake this way and then you sprint out this way. It's called a naked play. And I got in the huddle and I was like, all right, let's go boys, strong right, fake 67, naked right, on one, ready? And I broke it and nobody broke it and they just looked at me and they're like, naked? I'm like, yeah, that's how you pronounce it. Like, no, you got, you, you're from Texas, you don't pronounce it right. I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> I'm from Texas and I'm always right. <laughs> Can I get an amen? I guess the one amen I get in here today. All right, <laughs> moving on, naked. All right, are you comfortable with the word yet? Not yet, okay, it's okay. But he reached up and he, and he held us in his hand. And the, and the reason I brought that part up is because it was as if we were stripped of everything stripped of all our successes, stripped of all of our failures, stripped of all of our talents that he's blessed us with, stripped of all the gifts in our life, just us, and it was enough. In this place, held in, in the Father's hand, as a son, it's 100% enough. As a daughter, it's 100% enough. And today, I, I want this message to kind of center around that vision, that if you would allow him, that you would, number one, that you would allow him to reveal the places in the realms that you've been living in, where you've been performing. And then, by the grace of God, you would let him reach up and rip you out of all those areas. Even if it's just one today. Come on, if you're, if you're down for that, would you just raise your hand? <laughs> Say, Lord, I, I want you to reveal this to me. I want to see the areas that I put my identity in something other than you. And, and, and here's, here's the best part. Don't, don't perform your way out. Don't strive your way out. Let him take you out. Let him hold you in, your hand, in, in his hand this morning, amen? You know, as, uh, as we talk about performance today, I wanna kind of give you the reason why. why. Why is this so important that we talk about performance? Why well, is it so important that we talk about putting our identity, 100% of our identity, in nothing but Jesus? <clears throat> um, 
I believe it's important because any area that you're putting your identity into something other than him is an area that you're performing for. And I propose to you today that if you're performing, you're not really living. I believe there's an anointing today actually in this service. I actually believe he wants to get life back into you. He wants to, I, I said he wants to get life back into you. He wants to give you his life. In this scripture and in this message today, I hope if it, whatever you receive, I hope it's life. Because you know what wants to yank life? You know what will yank life right out of you? Performance. It makes you, it, 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 it's pressure, there's stress, there's comparison, there's jealousy, there's all the, the, the crazy crap and the stuff that we don't like. It all exists under the, the umbrella of performance. And when you will rip that thing off your life and you will kick it in the teeth and say no more, all of a sudden life begins to, just to come on the inside of you. I don't have to perform. You don't have to perform. Like look at your neighbor and say, you don't have to perform. The Cowboys have to perform today, but you don't. What's that? They're gonna make it. You keep saying it in faith, brother, because every year they just seem to rip my heart out. <clears throat> and I'm not even a fan. I, her, I, my heart's ripped out for all the fans. It's just like, I don't think they can keep enduring this. You know what I'm saying? It's time to move on. Eagles, 49ers. Uh, I, was, I was expecting a gag, someone just to just gag out loud right there. Okay. See, I can, you can always get amen when you start talking about football. All right. If you have your Bible, open up to Galatians chapter three. Let's live today. Let's break off performance. Let's actually live. <clears throat> Galatians chapter three, verse 26 says this, for you are all sons of God. That word sons there means child. It includes you females. <laughs> uh huh. For you're all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. It's a big statement there. You become a child one way by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. You have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Now, before we skip over that and keep going, you have to realize how big of a statement this was by Paul. Up until Jesus, everyone, everyone believed there was a chosen people, the Jews, and then there was everybody else. God blessed his people. Everybody else was destined for hell. You were either born into the family or you weren't. And here comes the gospel. This is the good news of the gospel. The gospel is, doesn't matter what you said, what you've done, what your past looks like. If you believe in Jesus, you are grafted in. You have been adopted as a son. You've been adopted as a daughter. And here he's coming to the first church and he's saying, it doesn't matter if you're a Jew or a Gentile. Can you imagine if you were a Jew sitting in the audience? Can you imagine if you were a Greek, a Gentile sitting in the audience? I mean, like, Phew. This Paul guy, I don't know if he, he don't know what us Greeks, you don't know how we get down. You sure about this? Doesn't matter if you're Jew or Greek, slave or free, male or female. There's one for you right there. We know, we know through our study in scripture that females weren't even counted. When it says that Jesus fed the 5,000, that's just counting the males. And here Paul's coming like, hey, doesn't matter if you're Jew, Greek, slave, free. Another, another scripture in Colossians 3 says, barbaric. All that matters is Christ. All that matters is us in him and him in us. You know what qualifies you as son? You know what qualifies you as child? Believing in Jesus. Can I put it in our, in our term? Doesn't matter if you are redneck or sophisticated. Doesn't matter if you got a college degree or a high school degree or not. It doesn't matter if you're poor or you are rich, you live in a trailer park or a mansion. None of that actually matters in the kingdom. The kingdom operates completely different. All of us are sons, all of us are daughters, all of us are heirs. Not because you got a great big house to live in or you're driving around a crappy car or what. No, no, none of, just erase all of it. I'm a son, I'm an heir. This is what he's saying. He said, and if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. 
I love what he does here. He doesn't just say you get it because of Christ. He says, because of Christ, you connect all the way back to Abraham's, the, the promise that God gave Abraham. What did, he, what did he bless Abraham with? Everything. The father of many nations. You've now been grafted in to that. Now I say that an heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is a master of all, but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the father. Here Paul begins to talk about the law, what it used to look like under the law before Jesus. Even so we, when we were children, we were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, Jesus, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Verse seven, therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Amen. Would you pray with me, Jesus? We give you this time. I uh, pray like we, we talked about to start that you would just instill us with your life. Life from above, life from on high, life from heaven. <clears throat> in the areas where we need energy, where we need life to come in, where we feel dull, where we feel tired, I just pray for every person who needs it. They would reach out and grab life from your scripture today. And we just do that by faith in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. 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 How many of you remember the old game that you did in, in school, tug of war? Anybody remember tug of war? All right, we all remember tug of war. I started to think about this and, and um, in my head, I pictured tug of war. It's like me on one side and one person on the other. I was reminded that tug of war uh, operated a lot differently when we were in school. I went and served at, helped one of my, my middle son's uh, classes at a little activity day. And I don't know if you remember this, it's not one versus one, it's 50 versus 50. Y'all remember doing this in school? They get one class, 30 kids on this side and an, against another class, 30 on this side, right? And, and then they, they, what, what happens? You usually put the, the big dude in the back and if they really know what they're doing, they get inside the loop and they turn and sprint. You know what I'm saying? Like, but you gotta, be, you gotta be in the third grade before you do that in the fourth grade. You know what I'm saying? You gotta have some skill. You know what you're doing. What happens? They tie a little bandana in the middle. One team starts to pull it this way. They get tired. The other team's, team starts to yank it this way until they're pulling, tugging back and forth until somebody wins. I wanted to give you that picture today because I actually think it's a, a great analogy for what happens to our identity every single day. It's a picture of what is consistently happening to you. And on one side, it's the good stuff. On one side, it's the promises of God, pulling you into who you really are in him. You're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You're a royal priesthood. Uh, you, you've been made new. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away. All things are new. You're a son. You're a daughter. You're an heir of the most high God. And here we have the promises of God yanking your identity all the way into him. But on the other side, we have to be super honest. On the other side exists something completely different. And you know what's on this side of the rope? I'll break it down into two words, success and failure. Performance. You've got success and failure trying to pull your identity over into them. I don't know if you've discovered this or not, had put much thought to this. You know what success and failure want to do? You know what the enemy would love for success and, and failure to do? To define you. He would love nothing more for your failures to define you. And I wanna make you super, super aware today <laughs> that this battle, this tug of war is happy, happening consistently in your life. Isn't that such great news? Aren't you so encouraged today? You mean I'm gonna have to fight this battle all the way until I go to heaven? Yep, God bless. <clears throat> but this is the truth. See, over here you have your successes. 
Oh man, doing really, started this business. Man, it's popping. It's doing really, really good. All right, you, you, you know, I got promoted. I'm making lots of money. Uh, my, and it's just pulling you, pulling you. You know, you know what's even funny? Uh, this can even be the success that you have in God and in the kingdom. And let me give you my disclaimer today. I'm not saying that you shouldn't enjoy the success that God's blessed you with. 100% enjoy it. 100% be thankful for it. Don't get super critical about it. But I will say this, make, make sure, make sure that you don't start putting your identity in it. Make sure that you keep 100% over here in Christ, into the promises of God. Because cause, cause, just, just hear me today, you will succeed in life a lot, but guess what, you'll start to fail too. It's a fine line. It's this weird thing in our relationship with God. When we're faithful and we steward things well, what does he do? He starts to bless you. What does he do just because you're his kid? He starts to bless you. And all of a sudden you start rolling around in the blessing and you can forget about the one who blessed you. Anybody ever rolled around in their blessing before? That's a great title of a message, rolling around in your blessing. And you're enjoying all that he has. And it's important that we just keep our focus over here. You see, one of the most dangerous things I believe that we can do is actually start to put identity in our success when it comes to our success in our relationship with God. See, we'll get successful in our relationship with God. Like, yeah, I don't know if you guys know, but uh, I prayed every single day this week. And um, yeah, I'm just... I'm just crushing it. This is bottom line is I'm crushing my relationship with God. I don't know about you. I mean, every time I, I, I got in my truck and drove to work, Christian music was on. Every time, every time. Not even, didn't even let that secular crap in there. You know what I mean? Like I kept it out, kept the de- devil out. And uh, I mean, <laughs> I don't want to say it, but I, uh, I read 15 chapters this week. <laughs> And they were all in Leviticus. Who has the discipline to do that except me? <laughs> Sat on the front row at church, raised my hand for two plus minutes. I mean, come on, you have to love God and be in shape to do that. <laughs> and we play this game in our head. Where we're, oh man, well, I'm really crushing it in my relationship with God and we feel really, really good about ourselves. Now hear me today. You should take the moments to feel really, really good about yourself when you have momentum in the kingdom and in the Lord. It's okay to feel good. It's just not okay to keep your, put your identity in it. Because when you begin to put your identity in how successful you are, you know what it actually leads to? It actually leads to religion, a religious spirit. It leads to becoming a Pharisee. Let that one just kind of sink in for just a moment. I'm really doing really, really good and I'm, I'm succeeding, I'm succeeding, I'm succeeding. And it leads you over. If when I put my identity into how disciplined and how well I'm doing pursuing God, I become religious. I would, here, here's, what, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna keep my identity in Jesus and realize that I would be a fool without him. If I'm doing anything good over here, it's because of his grace on my life. If I'm even walking in a little bitty tidbit of discipline, I know it ain't because of my will, but it's because his will is being done in my life. And somehow I figured out how to, how to put, push my will over onto his, give him full reign is what I'm saying. You see successes and failures, they tug, they pull, they pull you away. Now, if you live this life of putting your identity in how well you do or how bad you do, you know what your life looks like? It looks like a ride at Six Flags. It's a roller coaster. And when you fail, just one little mistake, man, I didn't get to pray this morning. Man, I didn't listen to my Christian music like I usually do. God's not going to bless me anymore. His favor just left my life. The dove just flew off. It's gone. And we, we struggle over here. Oh, but when we know our identity is completely here, in God, 
in Christ Jesus. You know what can happen? You can succeed or fail and stay grounded. You can succeed or fail. Keep your life. Live in, live in this non-pressure, non-stress situation. You see, he said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know what a heavy burden, you know where a heavy burden comes from? Performing. Some of, the, some of the reasons you're feeling the heavy burden in your relationship with God is because you're performing for him. Oh, come on, I'm preaching now. That's what's happening. It feels heavy. It feels stressful. You got to strive. You got to, you got to, I, I need wrinkles by 45 in my forehead so everyone knows I pray hard. I strive in prayer. I find that relationship with Jesus, everything the gospel points to, everything that Jesus did, kind of points to this one thing. Um, I'm Jesus, I did everything, just connect to that. You wanna see blessing in your life? Connect to me. You wanna grow? Connect to me. Happens to be a scripture about vines and branches, you should read it, it's really good. Those who are disconnected, what happens? They stop producing fruit. You know, you know what disconnects you from the vine? Performance. See, Jesus, he teaches us. Paul was teaching us. Uh, you're all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Would you allow him today to rip you out of those realms where you're performing? Now I'll be really honest with you. I, uh, <clears throat> there's been moments in my life where I, thought, where I thought there was more identity in Christ than what was true. And just to be vulnerable with you, I, there have been moments <clears throat> in the past year or two years where I will go to a conference, a church conference or a pastor's conference, and I'll get in the room with dudes that are doing what I'm doing and doing way better, have bigger churches, and honestly, they're better speakers and they're just a better leader. And guess what creeps up in old Keith? A little bit of insecurity. Find myself in those places and I get insecure. All of a sudden it comes up, I'm like, what? What, what is that? What's all that about? And you know what insecurity is? It's just a lack of knowing your identity in him. When you feel insecure, all that, it, all that should be to you is a red flag that you need to put more identity into him. As a daughter of the most high God, there's no more security than being right here with him. You don't have to look good for him. You don't have to perform for him at all. Holding you in his hand, that's enough. Oh, come on, I can tell I'm hitting some hearts now, right? As a man, you ain't got to have it all together. All right, you don't have to always have to be the strong one. You don't always have to have the answer. You get insecure. Come on, we all feel it. We were just having a conversation with someone I was in the, in the foyer. It seems as if guys don't, don't deal with insecurity and girls, they deal with it way more. Huh. <laughs> we probably deal with it more. <clears throat> we just have different ways of dealing with it, don't we guys? We just stick our chest out a little bit more. Right? We just, we just start ordering just a little bit smaller t-shirt. <laughs> we go from two arm days in the week to three days. You know what I'm saying? I gotta, gotta feel good. It's insecurity. Insecurity. You gotta be careful because when you get super secure in God, you might get fat. <laughs> well, <laughs> I feel pretty good about being a son. I will take a cheesecake. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know what? Make that too. 
I'm feeling super secure today. <laughs> I'm a son. No, I'm a son. <clears throat> but there's this battle, there's this tug of war going on. Now, who you are is what I've been talking about. It's who you are in Christ. All bought and paid for by Jesus. It is his grace that allows you to be a son and a daughter. The question becomes now, all right, I know that message. I heard that message. Thank you for the encouragement. Now, how do I live this out? Because when you start to hear about, when you start to hear messages on grace, on identity, on it's, it's just like my example. Well, I'm a son, so what, what do I need to do? Like, if it's not about my performance. If, if, if it's not about my success or failure, then like, am I just supposed to just go home today and just watch football and maybe Jesus will come and make my wife happy and take the garbage out? Like what happens here? Like what am I, what am I supposed to do? I need you to hear me today. Your sonship, your daughterhood is all about identity. But make no mistake about it, Jesus still wants you to do something. There's still a call on your life. There's still a mission that he's placed on the inside of you. He created you for the mission. God had a mission that he wanted to accomplish. He created you for it. There's still something that he wants you to do. And I'll even go as far as to say this, and he wants you to do a good job. He still wants you to do a good job. So how do we do a good job and not perform? How do we do a good job Stay in, stay in sonship. How do we do a good, but do a good job, but not perform? I was asking the Lord this, and I, I believe he, he, just, he just helped me by changing the verbiage, changing the word. And he gave me the word stewardship. I want you to hear me today. In the kingdom of God, the kingdom is not about performing for your identity. It's about stewarding what, he's, what he has given you. I don't perform with what he gave me, I steward what he gave me. And when he showed me that, it completely changed my mindset because you know what, you know what stewardship says? Stewardship says I've been given something, I didn't earn it. Stewardship keeps the focus on the one who, who gave it. Stewardship has me go, um, Lord, what do you want me to do with this gift? What do you want me to do with this talent? What do you want me to do with this blessing? See, it, 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 it keeps you in a heart posture and a mind posture where you realize where it came from. Oh, performing will do the opposite. Performing will have you taking it, trying to earn your seat. You wanna know how you do a good job and stay in identity? You just start to steward. You simply just start to steward. There's a great parable. It's called the parable of the talents. What, what happened in the parable? The master leaves and he gives talents, which represents money. He gives, he gives talents to each person. One, five, one, two, one, one. Everybody remember the parable? Notice in that story, um, they did nothing to get the talents. Are you hearing me today? They didn't do anything to get it. In fact, the scripture says that the master gave them the talents according to their ability. What ability do they have? The ability that God gave them. Now, you might read that scripture like me over the years and go, am I a five guy or am I a two guy? I know I ain't a one guy. Come on, Lord. Like, and then anybody else, anybody else read the scripture and kind of be like, Lord, what's up with the whole the one guy didn't do anything and then you took that one and gave it to the, the 10 guy? What about the two guy? Anybody else? Anybody else? Like, remember, y'all remember the story? Five guy did what he got, did what he was supposed to do, got five more. Two did what he was supposed to do, got two more. The one buried it and the Lord came and took it away. Now you would think God's gonna give it to the two guy. He's only got four, the other guy's got 10 and we'll even it out a little bit. He gives it to the 10 guy. Why? I don't know. I just thought I'd bring it up today and to see what you thought about it. <clears throat> I don't know. 
It's kind of weird, isn't it? I actually do have an answer. I'm just kidding. (laughs) It's a picture of how there is no performance. See, God chooses who he gives what and how much. And you can sit all day and be the two guy and be ticked off at the five guy. No, not lunch, five guys, the five guy in the parable. And you can be mad at him. You can be jealous. Until you realize that the guy who got five did the same thing that you did who had two. Nothing. But it was poured out on our life by the love, the grace, and the mercy of our Heavenly Father. And if you didn't didn't do anything to get it, guess what? You don't have to worry about trying to keep it. Just steward it well. Just go invest it. Just don't bury it. Do something with it. Oh Lord, I thank you that what you've given me, I'm gonna steward it well. And and I got really, really good news, news for you today. If you mess up in the stewardship, you stay a son. Oh, come on. I said, if you mess up in the stewardship, you stay a daughter. How do I know? Read the story of the prodigal son. He was an heir. He got his inheritance. He did not steward it well. And you know what his first thought was? Is the thought that we all have. Well, at least I can come back and be a slave. Paul said, you're no longer a slave. You're a son. You're no longer a slave. You're a son. Doesn't matter if you're Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male or female. All that matters is Christ. You and him, him and you. This is good news today. This is great news today. This is life kind of news today. You see, the pressure comes off. The pressure comes off. Would you stand to your feet? If he gave you something to steward, don't you believe he's good enough to help you actually steward it? I remember my uh, red shirt freshman year at, at West Texas A&M, I was backup quarterback. <clears throat> Our starter had gotten a concussion the game before and I was going in to play Abilene Christian. Like I said, we were seven and zero, oh, and uh, I did not want to be seven and one after that game. I wanted to keep the undefeated season going. Felt a ton of pressure. Woke up that morning, couldn't eat breakfast. I mean, just, I was just so anxious and so nervous. And had a buddy of mine who was a believer. He came over to me, noticed I was just struggling. Before the game, he came to me and, and um, hey man, you ready? How you doing? I'm like, I'm, I'm something. I don't know if I'm ready, but I'm something. <clears throat> and he made this one statement and it completely changed my perspective. He said, <laughs> he said, you do know he didn't bring you this far to fail. I believe that's a prophetic word for some of you today you do realize he did not bring you this far to fail. He didn't give you the talent. So you could go out there and flop on the field. And it, and it, it took my mind from a place of performance, man, I better do well, I better do good, I better not let people down, I better, to, oh, I've been given something to steward. And if that's true, then when I step on that field, I don't step out alone because the one who gave it to me is the one who is with me and will walk me through it. Would you just close your eyes? Would you just lift your hands to the Lord and just thank him for that? Just thank him for that. Jesus, thank you that we don't have to do it alone. (laughs) Thank you that, that all the things that you've given us to steward You help us actually steward it. We're not left to steward it in our own strength even. 
but we have your help, your guidance, your wisdom, and your strength. Thank you so much for watching today. If you need prayer or would like more information, please reach out to us on our website at renewlifechurch.com or find us on social media. Also, if you're in the area, we would love for you to join us in person at one of our two campuses in Midland or Lubbock, Texas. Have a great week and we hope to see you soon.